Hello, this is Tim Flanagan with Mineral Lab. We are the designer and manufacturer of the Universal Specific Gravity Kit for an electronic scale as featured before you here. Now, we all are familiar with using an electronic scale to weigh an item, but what we did was develop an above the scale specific gravity kit so that you could use that same scale for SG measurement. This process and method is quite user friendly and it's also very accurate providing your scale has reasonable sensitivity. Now, Why did we measure specific gravity? Well in the case of gems and minerals it's an important and powerful identifying property and in the case of industry we often need to know the density of materials that we're manufacturing or working with. Now in the presentation you can see we actually have two versions of our kit. On the right is what we call the bench scale version of our specific gravity kit designed for what I call bench scales or equivalent to lab scales or what you might use in the classroom or in industry whereas on the left is our SG kit for a pocket carrot scale and here of course uh, that's often used in the gem and jewelry trade now the components of our two versions are virtually identical as is the procedure but we had to downsize those components to match the smaller capacity of a typical carrot scale on the left here. Beyond that, you can see that our kit is very complete. We include a weighing pan assembly that actually sits right on top of the weighing platform of the scale, along with a beaker holder that slides in from the side. And then we have a illustrated instruction manual, a specific gravity worksheet for recording your measurements and doing the simple calculation for SG, and a table of gems and minerals sorted by specific gravity. We throw in a tweezers and this silvery colored cylinder in our wooden base is a aluminum test weight of known SG equal to 2.70 which you can use to make sure that you're doing the SG measurement process correctly. In the next section we will demonstrate the setup and specific gravity measurement on the bench scale version. Hi, this is Tim from Mineral Lab again. Here today to demonstrate our universal specific gravity kit for an electronic scale. In this case we are using our bench scale version of the kit. Here is our bench scale. You want to start with your scale leveled out properly. Use any screw adjusting leveling feet to achieve that. Then open any draft shield type lid also, if your scale has a draft shield assembly above the platform, you'll need to open one or two doors as needed so that our components fit in place. These are our components over here. This is the beaker holder. This is our wing pan support, our beaker of water, and our wing pan. So we start, turn the scale on, and your scale can be set for grams or carats or any other unit of measurement because as to SG, the values are all relative so it doesn't matter. You set your weighing pan support right on the platform of the scale and notice up here at top these grooves and slots. This diagonal one you want to aim out toward the front like this and one of your three wires at the nine o'clock position like that. Next, bring in your beaker holder and the beaker holder is designed to slide underneath your scale just like this. So your scale has to have clearance underneath it. If it doesn't, adjust your screw leveling feet as needed to create more clearance. Now, at this point I do want to mention there is one difference in the design of our bench scale kit versus our carrot scale kit which you'll see over here. Because a typical carrot scale is compact it doesn't always have clearance underneath. We provide this auxiliary U-shaped base so you want to set your scale on that base and then you can see now there's plenty of clearance to bring our beaker holder into position. Other than that that's the only difference between the two versions of our kit they operate the same otherwise. 
Back to the bench scale version. Now the reason we call this a universal kit among other things is that the beaker holder itself is very adjustable. In or out, forward or back, even up and down for your beaker holder position. Now we pre-filled the beaker with water here. Just want to get it full, it doesn't have to be accurate. Slide that into place so that it's roughly centered over the wing platform. Then you take your wing pan and insert it through that slot I showed you earlier. Immerse it in water and then it anchors in that center groove there, just like that. Then do your final adjustment so that the pan is suspended freely, not against any side of the beaker. Now look at our scale. You'll notice that we've added all this weight to the platform so we need to zero it out. And that's what we call the tear point, T-A-R-E. Notice the tear point. We have the weighing pan support sitting on the platform. We have the weighing pan inserted, hanging from that support, and the pan itself is suspended in the water. The beaker has the water in it. There's no specimen in there now, so this is the tear point. That's the point at which you zebra out your scale. So now we're ready to start our measurements. Now, to assist you in that, we have a specific gravity worksheet. It starts off by telling you what the simple equation is for specific gravity. It equals the weight of the stone in air divided by the difference between the weight of the stone in air and the weight of the stone in water. So that's all we have to do is weigh the stone in air and then weigh the stone in water, enter our, our measurements here, and then do the simple calculation. And also, when you do your weights in air and water, you always want to do your weight in air first uh, because if you otherwise did your weight in water first, then you'd have to dry off your specimen before you could do the weight in air. So why go through the trouble? So here's a blue mineral we're going to weigh. Starting with weight in air. Again, make sure your scale is zeroed out. And then just place it on the weighing platform of the scale. And the weight in air is, there's nothing mysterious about it. It's simply the same as weighing your stone on the platform itself. Notice how there's plenty of clearance below the beaker here to fit your stone. And we record our weight, 4.80. Back here on our worksheet, right under weight in air. Now we're ready for weight in water. We extract it from there. And then in case your scale drifts, always tear it out before that next weighing. Now just drop it into the underwater weighing pan. Check for any bubbles. If they are, knock them off with your tweezers. Make sure the stone's fully immersed. And then read your weight in water, which is 3.28. Notice how it weighs less than the weight in air. We would expect it to weigh less than weight in air. For the same reason our bodies feel lighter when we're in a swimming pool. Now we need to compute the difference between weight in air and weight in water. Which is here uh, 1.52. Now for the final step, the division calculation. We're going to bring in our calculator and weight in air 4.80 divided by the difference of 1.52 gives us a specific gravity value of 3.16 and if I didn't mention it before the normal standard with SG measurements is to carry them to two decimal places now we bring out our gem and mineral table listing the minerals sorted by specific gravity and you can see gold there at the top because it's the densest now we just follow down until we find the range of 3.16. Let's turn this over. Oh, and there it is. Appetite. Appetite's textbook SG values 3.10 to 3.35. And our measurement is 3.17, so it's right in the middle of that range. I'm going to remove that. And sure enough, Appetite we know is of the hexagonal crystal system and you can see that cross-section. Now here's another important point about this is we did all that setup for the kit at the beginning 
we don't have to change a thing now because we're ready to measure yet another mineral. So we can go right into our second mineral. Tear your scale. Here's a red one with pretty crystal faces. Weight in air. 8.73 grams. Recording it down here on the worksheet. And your weight in air. Now for the weight in water, we extract it. Tear the scale again in case there's any drift. Weight in water. Looks good. And that value is 6.43 grams. Your weight in water, our difference being 2.30 grams. Now for our final division step, 8.73 grams divided by that difference of 2.3 grams gives us an SG of 3.80. Now that's a pretty high SG for a gem mineral of vitreous luster as this one is, which makes me think this might be in the range of zircon or garnet or corundum. See how versatile that is? So let's bring out our table. Again, starting at the top with gold, all the way down. Oh, look at that. There's andradite, which is what this mineral is, and that's a species of garnet. The textbook value is 3.70 to 3.90, and our measurement of 3.80 is exactly in the center. And I should mention, too, you can see that this table has at least a half a dozen other properties of the gems and minerals to assist you in secondary testing. So this uh, method and this apparatus is quite accurate and as you can see also user friendly. That's all there is to it. You can just get set up and do a large number of specimens very quickly. If you have any questions you can go to our website minerallab.com. There's a contact us page and I want to thank you for your time.